Hello lovely people, how are you doing? Um, I've got a helper again today. Hi Layla. Um, yeah, so today I thought I'd talk a little bit about some science books. Um, now I wasn't very good at science at school. Uh, biology I was pretty good at, I was always really interested in archaeology, anthropology, things like that. But my maths was not one of my strongest points. I wasn't terrible at it, but I wasn't really good enough to sort of grasp it and take it through into physics and chemistry and all that sort of thing. Um, also, I think I kind of lost interest at about that stage. <laughs> um, so yeah, probably my fault. But these days I find I really enjoy reading um, some of the science books that are out there. Uh, obviously helped a lot by, there are great explanations online now, there is wonderful documentaries, you can pull them up on YouTube half the time. Um, there's some of those great little tutorials on YouTube which tell you, um, they explain some of the basics and they do it really, really well and nicely. Hello, do you like science as well? Um, it's a very scientific cat. <laughs> anyway, so this is one of the first sort of sciencey books I picked up because I always enjoy Bill Bryson, um, and he has a great talent for putting things in terms that well I can understand that makes sense. Um, and so I mean he's got a lovely bit here. This is just where he's talking about the beginning of everything. Um, so he's talking about the Big Bang. In either case, get ready for a really big bang. Naturally, you wish to retire to a safe place to observe the spectacle. Unfortunately, there is nowhere to retire to because outside the singularity there is no where. When the universe begins to expand, it won't be spreading out to fill a larger emptiness. The only space that exists is the space it creates as it goes on. It is natural but wrong to visualise the singularity as a kind of pregnant dot hanging in a dark, boundless void. But there is no space, no darkness. The singularity is no around, around it. There is no space for it to occupy, no place for it to be. We can't even ask how long it has been there, whether it has just lately popped into being like a good idea, or whether it has been there forever, quietly we're waiting for the right moment. Time doesn't exist. There is no past for it to emerge from. And so, from nothing, our universe begins. And the whole book continues in this tone, and it's fantastic. Um, and actually, I do need to reread it now, because I read that again, I'm like, oh, this was fantastic. Okay, so... Definitely recommend that if you're not particularly sciencey first and you want somewhere to start from. This was awesome. Um, Carl Sagan. This is an ancient, ancient book that I was given years and years ago um, when I was a rather small person, so yes, a very long time ago. And it's from the original TV series and it's beautifully done. Um, it's, it's such a gorgeous old book, I absolutely love it. Um, Embarrassed to me, I don't think I've actually read it properly. I do have another edition, I haven't read that either. But I have read a couple of Carl Sagan's other books, including The Demon Haunted World, which is fantastic. Um, he writes incredibly well, it's very engaging. It is about com it's about using critical thinking and essentially combating a lot of the false views and false facts we find ourselves presented with. Absolutely recommend The Demon Haunted World. It's another one I've lost along the way and I need to buy another copy. Um, because it is just, it's such a good read and it is so topical these days. So absolutely, if you want to read a Carl Sagan, go with that one and he is a great writer. Okay, Brian Cox and Jeff Forshaw, The Quantum Universe, Everything That Can Happen Does Happen. Um, I really wanted to enjoy this book because there was just some great concepts presented that just sort of went, wow, that's incredible. Um, but there was a lot of math involved, and I got very confused and very lost, and um, yes. But definitely for the more technically minded, that one. And I've left one out. Do I have it? I do. Here there's another one. Origins, Neil deGrasse Tyson. 14 billion years of cosmic um, evolution. Awesome. He can definitely write as well. Uh, this was a fantastic book. It was one of those ones where you sort of put, put down every few minutes ago. Wow, okay, I need to think about that for a little bit. Um, but it is really good. Definitely not one to rush. Another one that I think I need to reread to try and get the hang of it a bit more. Um, but there is so much wonder and just um, so much, so many incredible facts out there about the universe. So many things that are still being discovered and still being found. Um, and it is, it's really nice just even to have a little grasp of it, a little overview, so you've got a little bit of an idea of what's going on around you, and it's amazing. Um, so I thoroughly recommend, particularly Bill Bryson, Carl Sagan, so far everything I've read of his I've loved, um, Neil deGrasse Tyson, only one I've read of his, thoroughly enjoyed it. Brian Cox, much more technical, you need a better brain than mine to, to get the hang of that one really. Um, but I have got another one of his that I'll try, because I do keep trying these books, because yeah, the world's pretty awesome, the universe is pretty awesome, and it's nice learning a little bit about it. 
Um, so tell me, are you into science books? Do you enjoy reading these sort of things? Do you have any recommendations for my sort of very basic level of understanding? Because if so, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And thanks very much. Bye.